All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my talk on Unveil the Magic with Houdini, without Houdini, Transfer Machine Learning Pipelines with Apache Houdini. Um, I'm Nadine. I'm leading One House's developer initiatives, and I've also uh, previously have been at Rockset and Bose, and I'm passionate about bridging engineering, product, and marketing to help drive developer adoption. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn um, at in slash Nadine Farah, or you can also find me on Twitter at nfera 86 If you're enjoying today's talk, I would love to hear from you. Uh, you can tag and follow the Apache Hoodie LinkedIn channel um, at company slash Apache dash hoodie, or you can follow us on Twitter at, at Apache Hoodie. Um, the QR code is a link to the Hoodie community. So if you want to follow up async, you can find me there. I'll hang out outside the conference room to talk to um, help answer some of your questions. So for the agenda today, we'll go over the medallion architecture, and then I'll talk. A, I'll, then that will lead us into a hoodie overview. From there, I'll talk about the incremental processing framework, and then we'll do a, go ahead and do a case study. So let's go over the medallion architecture. When we think of machine, machine learning pipelines, it kind of looks something like this at a high level. You have, you ingest your data, then you have some sort of data management, you process the data, then you create your models, and then you deploy it. So in this talk, I'm actually gonna focus more or less on the lines of ingesting, managing, and processing data. So more often than not, when companies are usually employing the medallion architecture at some level, they use it to help refine, re, refine and process the data. So let's take a look at what the medallion architecture looks like. So with a show of hands, how many of you have heard about the medallion architecture? No hands? How many? OK, cool. So this is a typical view of what you may have seen um, around um, some content around the medallion architecture. But let's take a let's walk. Let's like do a quick walkthrough. So when data is ingested, it will be uh, unprocessed and stored in the data lake. And typically in the raw layer or bronze layer, you'll have data duplication, change logs, raw event data, and more. And data typically here is unstructured. From there, the data will graduate to the silver layer where you'll perform data deduplication, you'll validate the data, orchestrate and manage it. For example, do data cleaning, you might file size and more. And then finally, you'll write some join queries where you'll kind of join all these different silver tables um, in order to create a fax table, also known as like a gold table, that can be used uh, by downstream applications like AI ML applications, analytics, and more. But if you look at this architecture, it seems pretty easy to do, right? But what does it take to really implement something like this? So generally, people approach the medallion architecture with the sample diagram I have shown. And you can see it seems a little bit more complex when you're trying to implement such structure. So in the raw layer, you'll first ingest raw or unprocessed data into the data lake, and you'll create the raw or bronze layer. And I'll use the raw and bronze layer interchangeably throughout uh, this presentation. Um, and then from there, you'll do a full table scan to grab all the data, including new updates, and rewrite the entire silver table with augmented data. In this process, you might use SQL or PySpark or something like this to deduplicate the data, to manage the data. Um, you might do cleaning or clustering in that sense. Um, and augmenting the data with the examples I gave is a very manual process. You have to manage and orchestrate all the processes in order to ensure there are no concurrency or write conflicts that can lead to data corruption, data loss, slow reads, and more. From there, um, you'll, with that, you'll do a full table scan and join the silver tables. Your join will happen in a temp table that you might create in Spark. And then from there, you'll output the results into a parquet file and then create your gold layer or a fact table. The query engine you use will do another full table scan to execute the query and return the results so it can be used for analytics and applications. You can see that there's a general theme here of scanning the full, uh, the full table and doing full table rewrites. Also, this whole architecture in itself is very manual. Um, you have to manually file size your data or to avoid the small file problem, or you have to clean all data, and so much more. And these te the technologies available in the, in the market kind of encourage this type of approach of building the medallion architecture because they lack a few key things. So let's see what this looks like. In the diagram, uh, 
Each of the zones have the same services repeated, but I'll go over what each of these uh, services are and, and how it affects the medallion architecture. So let's talk about automated table services. So many technologies don't offer fully automated table services that can automatically help manage your data and maintain your table's health. For example, Spark, you might have to run manual compaction, which is merging smaller files to larger ones, so you can improve query performance and also cleaning the data to ensure you run faster analytics and compliance. But if you run these two services together at some point, you would have to implement your own optimistic concurrency control mechanism in Spark. And here, if two services are trying to modify a record, one would have to fail or be blocked until the other service has actually completed its task. The incremental framework, the next thing I want to talk about is the incremental framework and indexes. So the incremental architecture prides itself in incrementally updating data sets without reprocessing the entire data over and over again. And a key capability that aids to achieve incremental processing is to handle data mutations at record level. This helps avoid reprocessing the non-changing data. Also, adding an indexing me mechanism can further help to quickly process these record mutations because indexing helps locate uh, records in the data lake faster and more efficiently. But by not having this, you have to constantly do full table scans and table rewrites. And at terabytes, petabytes, and exabyte scale data, this inefficiency becomes like really prominent. Um, you'll have to throw a lot of compute to your application, and at some point, it's just not a viable solution. So what's an intuitive uh, architecture that might be more efficient? Let's take a high level look. Um, in the sample architecture with Apache Hootie, you can ingest data into the raw zone. And from there, you can actually just do an incremental pool to pull just the new data and update the silver table. Here, Hootie automatically uh, manages all the data cleaning and file sizing and other table management services. And in this case, it becomes a little less operational than what you may have to do at Spark. Now, to build a goal table, you'll still create your temp table where you can perform the join operation. Um, but the changes are incrementally updated to the goal table. So you're not doing a full table scan or a full table rewrite. And then you can, do a, you can use a query, a query engine to do an efficient lookup. But now that I'm introducing Apache Hoodie, you're probably like, well, what is that? So this brings us into the overview of what is Apache Hoodie. So previously, we looked at the bottlenecks of the medallion architecture, but what if we just flipped it and you actually had these features or services enabled? So Apache Hoodie is a data lake house prop firm that provides database-like features to your data lake. And with Hoodie, you can have these fully automated table services that continually schedules and orchestrates the clustering, the compaction, the cleaning, the file sizing, indexing, and so much more in order to ensure your tables are always up and ready. In addition, you can replace old school batch pipelines with this incremental um, framework on your data lake. And Hoodie allows for quick updates and delete data with, with a fast pluggable um, indexing um, mechanism. And this includes, full, this includes support with streaming workloads with full support for out of order data, bursty data, and data deduplication. But since Hoodie provides an indexing mechanism, you can take the data updates from an upstream database and apply role level changes downstream to downstream application. And as a result, the incremental framework allows for faster ingestion, lower processing um, times for your analytical workloads. But Hoodie's features and services uh, enable for faster performance. We can go from hours to days on updating um, downstream applications to just minutes. So let's take a bird's eye view of what this platform actually looks like. So a lot of times when you think of Lakehouse formats, you think they're just a table format. But uh, Hoodie is actually a fully comprehensive platform that's designed for data ingestion and processing. And it's equipped with a, ride, a wide range of features and services aimed at maximizing the efficiency of both writing and reading data. So at the foundational level, you have your data lake storage. This is while your data resides in some format like Parquet or Avro. But upon this, you have the transactional database layer. And this is where Hoodie's true power shines as it offers multiple services, including table services, indexing, concurrency control mechanisms, and others. Um, these services collectively offer significant enhancements to data and table management. And so table services facilitates the handling of data at scale, uh, indexing helps with retrieval operations and concurrency control inserts at this consistency of data across multiple operations. After the data has been successfully ingested and managed um, through the transactional um, layer, Hoodie offers the ability to connect with the process data with popular computations like Presto. So by facilitating these integrations, Hoodie allows for efficient and advanced querying of data. But now that we have this bird's eye view of what Apache Hoodie is, 
We're going to dive into uh, a little bit of what, the, uh, of what the table kind of looks like. So a hoodie table consists of file sizes, and each file size contains a base file, which is Dart Parquet, format produced at some certain um, commit time or instant time, along with a set of log files that contains inserts or updates uh, to the base file since the base file was last produced. And as you can see in the top half of the diagram, a group of file sizes is known as a file group. So when the writes come in on the top half of the uh, diagram, the records are written to the file sizes, and each record has a key that is mapped to a particular file group. So let's talk about the advantages of having this particular file uh, layout. From the right side, if you have multiple table services running in the background, uh, uh, the services don't block each other because Hoodie has multi-version concurrency control. And from the read side, the file layout facilitates the query engine to query a table at a particular point in time. And when we talk about the incremental framework, this becomes a really po an important point. Now on the bottom half, when records get written into a file group, Hoodie's timeline records the commit action that was done. And the timeline, structurally, if you create like a Hoodie project, it's located in the .hoodie folder. Um, and it's essentially an event log. And there are different actions, actions that can be recorded to the timeline. For example, if there's a clustering event or a compaction event, basically things that you do to the table get recorded into the timeline. And um, there are timestamps time associated with every action along with some metadata about it. Now, following the timeline, there's the metadata table. The metadata table is structurally different from the timeline in, a, in it that it's an internal merge on read table. Um, the metadata table is a central place for all the files metadata, and when a commit happens, the metadata table gets equally updated as well. And you can just think of the metadata table as like this big index. So this brings us to a really good point that Hoodie stores state. So we talk, when we talked about the timeline and the metadata table, this is how Hoodie stores state. So if a record has an update, Hoodie checks the records key to see if the record exists in the file group. And if it does, um, it updates that particular file size depending on where the record located. But equally, uh, the timeline will get updated as well. And since Hoodie maintains a timeline of when an action or write occurs to a Hoodie table, you can essentially find, uh, you can essentially find out what changes occur in that time range. Um, and then from there, you can update downstream applications or table with just that data using Hoodie's incremental framework. So if you look in the, in the, uh, in the slide here, you can see an incremental query. There's a T1, T minus 1, and T. You can specify the time range that you want to see where the updates, uh, when the updates have happened and just grab those changes. So before we double click into the incremental framework with Hoodie's, uh, with the CDC feature for Hoodie, let's see how Hoodie is being used in the ecosystem. So Hoodie is proven at massive scale. Both uh, Uber, Walmart, and GE use Hoodie for their mission critical um, apps. In particular, ByteDance uses Hoodie at exabyte uh, scale for a single table. And even this, Hoodie is able to bring down analytics from days to minutes. But one of the ways that Hoodie brings it down is through its incremental processing framework. Recently, we introduced a CDC feature with the incremental processing framework, and this brings us into um, the next section of where we're going to talk about the incremental processing. So to recap, the medallion architecture represented a straightforward and more simplistic approach of constructing your bronze, silver, and gold tables. And a standout feature that spares you from conducting full table scans is Hoodie's incremental framework. Using this framework, only the changes are streamed to downstream tables. So to realize an end-to-end -end incremental processing, Hoodie provides a Hoodie streamer to efficiently pull changes from the source um, and support mutable data and record level changes and conveniently write the data to downstream sinks all the way from the source to bronze to silver and the gold layers. Here's an example of how you can use Hoodie Streamer to construct an incremental processing end-to-end. -end. A common use case is streaming the change logs from a database like Postgres through Debezium and Kafka. Each message has the before and after images reflecting the changes. The schema is registered to the schema registry. In the first step, the Hoodie Streamer gets the new data from the last checkpoint and bulk inserts them into the bronze layer. The bronze table contains the exact raw events from the Kafka source for further processing. Next, another Hoodie Streamer is constructed to do any kind of data cleaning and augmentation. For example, users can transform their data by flattening fields, selecting relevant fields within projections, and any other custom transformations that they want to do. But once that's done, the data are upserted to a silver table, which is a clean data set. 
Once the new changes are landed to the silver table, the subsequent hoodie streamer job conducts a more complex operation with business logic using the SQL provided by Hue, like joining the dimension tables and other data from multiple tables. But after the complex business logic is applied on the changes, the records are, ups, uh, are upstarted to a gold summary table for data analytics. But one key functionality here is supporting mutable data and the incremental processing. So let's take a deeper look at how Hootie takes the changes, handles the mutations, and streams the changes downstream. So when we look under the hood, there are quite a few steps between taking the incremental changes from source and streaming from the Hootie to the downstream. So to enable mutable data at record level, Hootie provides built-in support on locating the records and the record payload and merging so that, the, so that the user can customize their inserts, updates, and delete logic. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there needs to be consistency between the index and the data. So metadata can be used for reading and writing uh, the table. Hoodie provides automatic metadata management on the Hoodie timeline and the metadata table. Um, Besides managing the data and metadata, Hoodie automatically op optimizes the data layout on storage with a small file handling and table services like compaction and clustering uh, so that the query engines can read well-sized files and improve the query performance. Uh, along with, alongside the incremental processing, there could be concurrent writers, for example, backfill job to rewrite old data or job to delete selective data. So Hootie provides optimistic concurrency control and multi-version concurrency control for different use cases to efficiently handle multiple writes. So now you may wonder how Hootie handles record level mutation, which is necessary for incremental processing. Hootie provides a payload merge API for inserts, updates, and deletes so that users can customize what they need. So let's, take a, let's walk through this example. Let's say you have a table to store bank accounts. Each entry has a UUID, the name of the account, and the last updated timestamp and balance. But just like other databases, Hoodie requires the primary key field to be specified by the user to identify the unique records. And the primary key field here in this example is the UUID. For each incoming batch, Hoodie looks at the primary key, the UUID, to identify whether an input record is an insert, update, or a delete. And in incoming batch one, we have one insert and one update. During the insert operation, the table is updated by inserting the row with UUID 3 for me and updating the existing uh, record for Ethan's account. For the next incoming batch, the first record is marked as delete and Hoodie deletes this entry. The second record is another update for the XYZ account. Now, if you look at the results on the upsert operation, the balance for Ethan's account is not changed. And this is because we want to honor the balance of the latest timestamp. In this case, Hoodie looks at the ordering field and make sure to ignore the late arriving data from the application's perspective, so my account won't get $20 from nowhere. Hoodie has built-in support for event time ordering, which is prevalent in streaming and incremental processing. But once a data mutation is done, Hoodie attaches metadata, such as the commit time and the file name, to each record and also updates the metadata in the Hoodie timeline. And these essentially serve as a state for streaming changes from a Hoodie table. So while the record level mutation well, for the, well, for record level mutation, the primary key is required, or in some use cases like event log ejection, which inserts your data. Hoodie supports automatic primary key generation, so you don't actually have to specify primary keys, and this is a feature that we've released uh, recently. So aside from the existing incrementing pools, Hoodie provides a new CDC mode for incremental processing, and this provides a Debezium-like change logs with the before and after images, and here in the sample code, you can, read, uh, you can read the incremental data in the CDC format. For inserts, the before image is null and the after image is the new value. For update, the before and after images show the values for the before and after the changes. And then for delete, uh, the before image is the record and the delete, um, the image that comes after is null. So through the CDC feature, you can use this data to further uh, transform and process um, the both uh, before and after values. So let's do a case walkthrough and what this kind of looks like if you were to build an application. So when we talk about the machine, kind of what this machine um, pipeline kind of looks like, I'm going to focus on the ingestion um, tables that are optimal and process and refine customers' data. And then from there, once you get the data, you can load in the model and then you can deploy it. So here's a sample, a sample architecture that we'll walk through. And I'm going to take each, per, uh, each portion and walk through it. 
Um, in the first section, you'll have a person signing up for an account, making purchases, clicking on stuff, and updating their cart. From there, the data is either sent to a transactional database or a streaming source like Kafka, and then dumped into a data lake, creating the raw layer. When data is inserted into the raw layer, it'll be indexed for whatever index you want to use. And here, um, uh, yeah, you can pick whatever index you want to use. Um, and then from here, we have the clickstream data. So you can see the clickstream data has a couple of fields like session ID, URL, and a description of what that is. Um, you have the sample purchase schema, which includes the purchase ID, the quantity, the purchase price, and there is a description for what that is. You might have also a sense of cart activity. You might need the customer ID, the product ID, the activity type, whether they added or removed um, the assets, and the quantity that they want, how, many, how much they want to purchase it, and, and much more. And then you have the customer schema, which is typically you know, the customer's metadata. So to create the silver layer, the data is incrementally pooled where you have role level updates occur. And Hoodie only, only, only apply, updates the records if there's new data and avoids, basically avoids the full table scan. From there, you can create a temp table and join the various silver tables to build a gold or fact table. Um, here has, um, so then after you perform the join, Hoodie will only incrementally pull the updates to the gold table and update the appropriate records without full, doing a full table scan. Um, and if you want to write a sample join query, this is what it exactly looks like. You can get the customer's first name and last name, the clickstream URL, the time step and product information, and here we're correlating the user's activities with purchases. From there, you can perform a left join on the clickstream uh, via the customer ID, and you can also do another left join on the purchases based on the customer ID. You can filter through this time range, and then finally, you can order by the time step and purchase date. Once you get the results, you save it to a gold or fact table, and the query engine can be used uh, to read the data, uh, and results can be used to populate uh, downstream applications. So you can move it to a model, and then from there, deploy it. Um, so this wraps it up. I'm going to talk a little bit about Hoodie's roadmap really quickly. Uh, we recently uh, released 1.0.0-beta 1, and this release has a couple of game-changing features. One thing that's pretty cool is we have non-blocking concurrency control for high streaming writes. Um, so you're able, so multiple writers uh, can operate on the table with non-blocking conflict resolution, and this can kind of reduce the wait times or the bottlenecks that you might have. And it's actually ideal for high streaming writes because transactions can proceed independently and concurrently, leading to increase in throughput and overall system responsive, uh, responsiveness. And this is really good if you have CDC workloads, you're using Spark, uh, Flink, and much more. The other thing that's pretty cool is that Hoodie now also supports functional indexes, and it's built on top of Hoodie's multimodal indexing subsystem. It's essentially an index on a function applied to a column, and it enhances access speeds and integrates partitioning into the indexing process. You can easily manage these indexes through SQL um, syntax, so you can write create index if it doesn't exist on some table using some column name, and then you can provide, provide like the key values that you want to use. Um, if you want to learn about the, the one beta release, you can visit hoodie.apache.org, or when these slides are available, you can check out the RFC 69, which has more details on this. Um, you can come and build with the community, and if you want to learn more about how you can use Apache Hoodie for your machine learning pipelines, there's a lot of resources here. You can um, follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, you can also scan the QR code to follow us on Slack. We host weekly office hours. If you have more questions, that will be great. Um, to come through that, and me and a PMC member are usually there to help answer questions. And I think that's it for me. I want to thank you for attending my talk, and I'm happy to take some questions now. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, do you have any like, uh, Oh, cool. The compaction kicks in? Yeah. Yeah. So we get the failure like that one, but whatever it is. Yeah. And that has been one of the constraints that we are not able to run long running jobs. Long running jobs? On top of the full data compaction. Okay. Is it anything? So this requires a lot of more questioning. So have you are you on the hoodie slack? Yes. Okay. And have you posted the questions on the general yeah, 
Okay, I'm usually responding that I, maybe I missed your question, but usually are you, like one of the things I will want to find out is like the error message of where compaction is failing. So I need the full stack error to kind of see what is going on. Some things that could be, it could be a resource issue. I don't know if you have multiple services running together and maybe there might be a conflict there. Um, I need to look at the configs in order to kind of debug more. So I would recommend um, shoot me a message on Slack, tag me, and tell me that you were at the session, and I'll make sure to get to it um, sometime today. Because I, I need more. I need more. I need to know their hoodie version. I need to know more things about what you're doing to kind of debug the compaction failure. Yeah, let's let's follow up on Slack. I feel like I need to triage it more. But thank you for your question. Any other questions? How many of you are actually building machine learning pipelines or doing something with machine learning in general, or? Okay, how are you dealing with some of the machine learning pipelines or what are you using? Oh, Redis, okay, got it, yeah. Sounds good, all right, thanks guys.